get your butt in here. Oh my god, that one going cold. Wow! 18 pounds and five ounces. Who wants to win their first FOW tournament? I do. It was the last tournament of the regular season for the 2019 FLW Tour on Lake Champlain. Welcome everyone from the Polaris FLW Studios in Benton, Kentucky. This is our post-tournament recap show. I'm Travis Moran, joined in the studios yet again by Red Gold Tomatoes Pro, Todd Hollowell. Todd, last event of the season and what an event it ended up being. Yeah, Lake Champlain is one of those legendary fisheries. The FLW Tour has been here 11 times in 24 years and I can't think of a better place to finish up a great season than Lake Champlain. There was a lot at stake for this final event uh, for our anglers, and uh, why don't you break down this big body of water for us? Over 125 miles long and 14 miles wide uh, in the center part of this lake. Uh, lots of options for these guys to, uh, to explore. This time around, the, the real story was high water. Uh, the spring of 2019, all across the United States, has seen a lot of rainfall, and the, and the northeast part of the country, no different. High water has made backwaters accessible down in the Ticonderoga area on the southern part of Lake Champlain. We had that happening. We had smallmouth spawning up on the northern part of the lake, and that was really the biggest question for these guys that they had to figure out and practice this week. Which one were they going to target? And uh, with so much water to fish, different species to target, having a game plan was crucial. Why don't you break down the TH Marine Roadmap to Victory? The keys to having success at Lake Champlain and ultimately putting their, themselves in position to win this event, the anglers had to do two things this week. First and foremost, they had to manage their fish and manage their areas. Some of these guys were sight fishing for smallmouth. They had to get to the right fish early in the tournament, but they had to manage their areas. Some of these guys were battling local fishing pressure as the event wore on and other competitors that were fishing in the same areas. The second thing that these guys had to do this week was manage their time. Because of the sheer size of Lake Champlain, uh, Mother Nature can definitely play a role uh, in, in every event that comes to Lake Champlain. So making long runs to the southern part of this lake, uh, managing your time, making sure that you get back in time, not leaving too soon, all of those things came into play for the guys who made it to the top this time at Lake Champlain. And the biggest storyline coming into this event was the Angler of the Year race. Someone was gonna win that award but it was too close to call going into it. John Cox leading David Dudley by only one point. Yeah, you know, coming into this tournament, leading Angler of the Year, I, I was excited because then all you have to do is, you know, is just beat everybody else. That's what you think. Oh, you just gotta beat, you know, those guys that are right behind you. And uh, <laughs> those guys right behind you are pretty, pretty good, and you still gotta be, you know, uh, on your game, and it's just, uh, you know, it, I, I was happy to be in that position going in. Um, you know, the year I've had some really good tournaments and I've had some tournaments where I, you know, swung for the fence and, uh, and kind of missed. I usually hate fishing docks when it's this windy, but they seem to be staying under them. Jeez, look at that one with it. I think I caught the smaller one. Yeah, I did catch the smaller one. One thirteen. See if we can catch this up. This one fouled it up. <laughs> but no. Normally I don't fish the docks and they're in the wind so much. It's hard to skip that worm, but they keep biting, we'll just keep skipping it under there, I guess. Todd, after two days of fishing, it's the top three anglers in the AOI race making the cut into the top 30 and getting to fish another day. You got it. Joe Webster putting pressure on John Cox and David Dudley. Uh, sometimes we see this wrap up after two days on the final event, not this time. All three guys making the top 30. All eyes were on David Dudley because of his success here in the past. 
Yep, and ultimately it was David Dudley's to win. Uh, he loves this fishery, has so much uh, history here, has done well, and those small mouths cooperated with him and he was able to lock down his historic fourth Angler of the Year title. You know, today when I picked up that swim bait, within an hour I caught two four pound smallmouth. And to do that on Champlain, catch a four pounder, that fish is 30 years old. And there's not many four pounders in here. And that was a monumental hour for me for Angler of the Year. There he is. Oh gosh, oh gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That one gonna call. You know, to win my fourth angler of the year, that is special. You can tell looking at my arms, I got goosebumps on my arms. I know just to win one angler of the year, not many people in their career come across that. And to have four angler of the years underneath my belt, I wanted this one better than I've wanted any competition in my life. And, and I'm very humbled and blessed to come away with my fourth one. Let's give it up for the 2019 FLW Tour Angler of the Year, the Polaris Pro David Dudley makes history. He is a one, two, three, four time Angler of the Year. The FLW Tour is brought to you by TH Marine from Transom to Trolling Motor. Ranger Boat, still building legends one at a time. Evan Rood, learn more on evanrood.com. Polaris, the world leader in off-road vehicles. Yeti, built for the wild. And by Costa Del Mar. See what's out there. Well, I came down here with the intention of catching largemouth just because I, you know, I don't have a lot of experience doing smallmouth deals. So I spent the first day down in Ticonderoga. I only had four bites all day. So I was like, well, that's out. And I came up here and couldn't get any quality bites on smallmouth. So the last day of practice, I spent back down there and uh, figured out, you know, a little deal or an area that had a lot of fish and kind of figured out what they were doing and dialed them in a little bit better. Another one's a pretty nice one, two and three quarter. By the third day, we really got to see the quality of largemouth that were coming out of the south. Yeah, the last few times the FLW Tour has come to Lake Champlain, the conditions have been very different with much lower water levels, and the smallmouth have, have typically uh, dominated these last couple of events on the FLW Tour. Not this time, not in 2019. High water really showcased uh, the, the fertile largemouth bass fishery that's down the southern end of Lake Champlain, down around Ticonderoga in New York. A lot of guys refer to it as Ty, but a lot of shallow flooded cover, bushes, trees, a lot of vegetation, and a lot of bait fish that these fish were feeding up on post-spawn. Uh, when you come to Champlain, it, it's all about getting on the right size of fish. This time around, it happened down in Lake Champlain with the largemouth. I think the largemouth are weighing heavier. They're just primarily bigger. There's a lot of big smallmouth up here, but the smallmouth were closer to the spawn, so they're closer to post-spawn. Haven't put on the, the real meat yet, so they're real skinny. So a, a, you know, a three-five fish or a three-six fish is probably weighing three-one. With the largemouth, I think are beefing up a little bit faster, and they're, and they're usually bigger. They're bigger heads and bigger bodies, you know. <laughs> so basically I'm sitting, you know, uh, three or four yards from the bush and just flipping up in the bushes and, uh, you know, I'll let it go to the bottom and then pull it up and if they're not on there immediately I'll pick it out and flip it to the next one. That'll cool. And what's crazy is they're kind of like replenishing. Like I'll fish through a stretch and won't get bit, come back later and catch one. So we just threw back a 295. Got all over three pounders now. 
Ticonderoga really proved that it is a largemouth bass factory. Um, you know, guys like Tyler Stewart and uh, Daryl Byron pulling out some major bags, but none more than Eric Jackson on day three. Nearly 20 pound bag, moving him from 15th place all the way to third, making him the Evan Rood big mover. Eric Jackson, let's see your two best bass. Wow! Five today for Daryl Byron Worth. 16 pounds, 15 ounces, and his sophomore year on the FLW Tour looking for his first win. Tyler Stewart gets it done on day three. 18 pounds and five ounces, wow! Casey Scanlon of Lake Ozark, Missouri, you need 16 pounds and one ounce. Five today for Casey Scanlon, worth 18 pounds, 13 ounces. He moves up to second place, 56 pounds and eight ounces of Lake Champlain Bass. We're bringing you all the highlights from Lake Champlain on our post-tournament recap show. Sunday morning, championship Sunday. There's 10 guys getting ready to go kick some butt on the water. It's going to be unbelievable. I'm going to make the, the big run again and uh, hopefully can get down there and get back safely and uh, just really dependent, hoping the fish bite. So, You know, this morning, <clears throat> filled with emotions running down the lake, you know, pumped up. You know, choked up, uh, adrenaline's going, you know, boat screaming 70 miles an hour. I mean, tournament morning's a pretty special deal, and when you're making the final day, it's even better. Our field was cut down to the top 10 anglers, and seven of them were going to be making the long run south all the way down to Ticonderoga. Not only are we talking a 60, 70, maybe an 80 mile run, we're talking about having to spend time to get fuel, a shortened fishing day, lots of things that could go wrong, equipment failures. Managing the time uh, was going to be of the essence for the guys making that run down to the southern end of Lake Champlain. You know, really I had my game face on. You know, I've been in this position before and haven't got it done, so you know, I was going down there uh, open-minded and, you know, expecting to really, really catch him. There's one. Decent start for him. We're going to need some bigger ones. That's for sure. So I was fishing a drainage pipe down in Ty. I think what happened was the first two days of the tournament, the water was coming out of the pipe, but today, there wasn't, it wasn't even a ripple coming out of it. Number one. Yeah, what happens is they'll just, they'll get on this milfoil and they'll just eat, eat the bait as the bait comes by. Just feeding. Yeah, that's the way to start. Yeah. That's the way to start. And I think all the bait's done spawning and they're coming to here and they're going down this ditch out under the bridge and out to the main lake. There's a couple spots where the bass are just sitting there. There's a couple bear, kind of like little deep pockets. They just hang out, wait for the bait to come and go for the ditch. They're so fat. Oops. That's the keep it's on the board. Nice solid three, three and a half. Now as the majority of the field headed south on that long run at Ticonderoga, we saw two of the tour veterans stay close to home. David Dudley making a short run and then Brian Thrift just heading north on a quick little run as well. Different strategy and maybe a safer play Definitely paid off for Brian Thrift as he had a limit in the boat before most of these guys even got to their initial fishing location. It's a strategy that we see a lot of times out of Brian Thrift. He believes if he can catch more fish, he's gonna eventually cull up his weight throughout the day and have, have more weight than everybody else in the field. 
He went through the numbers today, and that's a strategy that paid off for Brian Thrift this week. That's a nice one. Hey, that's number five. Yes, it's a good one. A good one. Now I just gotta put five in the boat. Changes the game a little bit. Now three more. Changes the game. Plenty of time. Yes. That's the one right there. Come here, baby. God, he got it good, baby. Todd, over the course of the tournament, we saw the quality that was down south in Thai, uh, but with every hook set or every opportunity that presented itself down there came that much more pressure uh, to get that fish in the boat because you weren't sure of how many opportunities you were gonna get. For sure, typically on Champlain, the smallmouth are more dependable. They're more aggressive. You know they're gonna bite. If you lose them, you can come back and catch them. Very different when we're talking about the largemouth and specifically the ones down south in Ticonderoga. That largemouth bite can be tricky. They can be finicky. The fish can turn on and turn off with weather and, and fishing pressure can really impact the bite down there. Less time, less opportunities. Missing a bite, losing a fish down there, fishing for these largemouth can be a heartbreaker. Oh God, I was back again. Oh my God. Oh man, that was probably $30,000 fish right there. I'm not kidding. I'm serious. Where I'm sitting in the standings. That was a big, that was a big one. Oh my God. I can't believe I messed that up. More action from Lake Champlain when we return. The FLW Tour is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. Lorance. Find. Navigate. Dominate. Real Tree Fishing, the official pattern of FLW. Power Po, Swift, Silent, Secure. Mercury Marine, Go Boldly. Triton Boats, the driving force of performance fishing. And by Nitro, Performance Fishing Boats. I had a pretty special place down south in Ticonderoga. And it's a creek, it's where Lake George empties out. It goes through Ticonderoga. There's this nice little ditch and then there was a bridge where all the water flows out. And those two, this little ditch and this bridge was my honey hole the whole time. <sighs> Who wants to win their first FOW tournament? I do. You know my primary area, we're, we're sitting on it right now. And I've been catching them, you know, kind of on the inside grass line and around these two points. And um, there's one there. Be a bass. Uh, come here, baby. I need you. Yes. That's it. Need need a couple of them. That's gonna be a good call. Oh yeah, baby. Mm, that's a four. That's a four. Doing well in this event, making the top 10 here at Lake Champlain is a personal goal of mine. I've never made a cut on Lake Champlain. I've been fishing professionally for 13 years. That's a little bit. First time ever to make a top 10 at Lake Champlain. So this has been a very, very successful week for me. This fish is gonna matter if I can land it. It's a huge snow fish. Belly. So I made a half a pound upgrade. Uh, that's three casts and three fish. Two three and a halfs and a 2.8. Oh yeah. Because of the sheer size of Lake Champlain, boat navigation, time management mm. are more important here than just about anywhere else yes. with the FLW Tour visits. This time around, last minute upgrades were very important to several guys, Travis. That's better than what I got. 
Yeah, they had talked about that in their strategy, hoping for a late afternoon bite. And uh, in the last few minutes they had, it happened for a few of them. Casey Scanlon making a couple crucial upgrades. Same thing with Eric Jackson hooking up with one right at the end. And then even Daryl Byron on his way back, making a quick stop and immediately calling out another one as well. The guys really made every last minute count. Mm. That'll help. Right, we gotta get going because I don't know how bad it's gonna be out there. And as the anglers headed to the scales, the question was, were we gonna see a repeat tour victory from a Dudley or a Thrift, or were we gonna see someone brand new get their first tour victory? And it was way too close to call. The only thing left was for Chris Jones to weigh him in and officially crown a Lake Champlain champion. Word on the street is that Plattsburgh is the place to be. The FLW Tour is the thing to see. Today is Championship Sunday. Getting it done! Lynchburg, Virginia's David Dudley! Wow! A five-ass limit! This is gonna be close, I think. A good run. 19 pounds and 10 ounces! Wow! Four today for Tyler Stewart, worth 10 pounds, four ounces. Your champion is Missouri's Casey Scanlon, Getting it done on Championship Sunday! Wow! I've been uh, been in this position before, finished runner-up by ounces and, and several big derbies. So to win one, that's what it's all about. Uh, it helps solidify my career. I've been out here a long time, and I'm due. So it'd be uh, it'd be a good day to win.